Hey everyone, so this will be a continuation of yesterday's video. Yesterday I introduced WT Forms to you in Flask. In today's video I want to continue using WT Forms and I just want to go over a couple of the validators that you can use to validate your form data when it gets submitted. So in yesterday's video I used the input required validator which um, is pretty simple. It just makes sure that the input has something in it and if there's nothing in it, then it complains. If there is something in it, then the data is valid. So in today's video, I want to uh, use just a couple of other validators. So let me start up the server first. And I forgot to mention in yesterday's video, but I'll have this code on GitHub. So I'll put a link down in the description below so you can get the code if you want to uh, play around with this yourself. So I have this form that I set up. Let's see. It's going to load, right? It's always a little slow initially on my computer. All right, so I have the username and password fields from yesterday. So if I don't put anything there, it complains that both fields are required. So uh, I went through that in yesterday's video, so I'm not going to cover that again. So instead, I'm going to play with a couple of other validators. So let's just take a look at some validators that we have here. Let's try email. So uh, all these validators are in the wtforms.validators module. So I already imported input required. Let me import email. And I don't like the name of this. It probably should be something like is email, but that's what they put email. So let me change this. Username will be a password. So validators is a list i already have input required in there so now I'll put email and it is a function so i'll save that everything should have um, restarted which is the case so let me do this again so if i don't put a email for the username it should complain so i'll put random stuff for the password and it says invalid email address which is exactly what i want so if I put Anthony at prettyprinted.com and then I put a random password, then it tells me that the form was successfully submitted. And with any of these validators, you can have messages that are custom. So instead of saying that the email was invalid, I could say something like, I don't escape that I don't like your email and I'll save that and then I run it again so if I put just Anthony it should complain but instead of the invalid email error message I should get my own error message back I don't like your email so uh, this is common to all the validators they take in a message if you want to use a custom message if you don't specify anything then it will just use um, a generic message that will get sent into the uh, form.errors. So let's take a look at a couple of other validators. So I looked at email. What's another somewhat interesting one? Length. Let's do length. So let's say the password has a length. So first I need to import length from the validators. And with these names being so generic, it may be more useful to import from WT forms and then just keep the validators on there. So an example would be validators dot link. Um, it may be easier to read in the future when you come back to your code because if you just look at length uh, at a glance, it may not make sense. But in this video, I'm just going to use length because I already started importing from WT forms dot validators, but it may be useful to keep that validators on there. That's one of the cases where, um, more writing is better because it uh, it actually explains what's going on. You know it's a validator, whereas with length and email, uh, it's a little confusing. So length takes a minimum and a maximum. So I'll say the minimum is going to be five and the max is going to be 10. So that means my password needs to be between five and 10 characters. So let's see what happens when I save that and run it. So username uh, needs to be email address. So I'll put that email address in. The password. 
I'll put three characters, not four characters. I'm trying to log in. And it says field must be between five and 10 characters long, which is a pretty useful message. So if I do more than 10 characters, same message. And if I do something in between five and 10, then it is successfully submitted. So the cool thing about using uh, something like WT forms, even though dealing with forms is very simple, there's a lot of repetition with forms. So having uh, this library WT forms makes it so much easier to deal with all these common cases that occur in forms, that occur in forms because you have all these validators that you can uh, easily use instead of writing your own repetitive code to validate these things. So let's look at one more validator. I just looked at length. Um, let's do any of. So it looks like it takes um, a values list. So let's do any of, right, capital O, just to make sure, yeah. So I'll add a third one to the password, third validator. So any of, and then the values are going to be secret and password. So your password needs to be one of those two things, which of course those aren't good passwords, but those are the ones I'm using in my example. So I messed something up, uh, let's see. Oh, I didn't put it inside of the list. So it should go here and save that and then run it again. Okay, so it's working now. If I go back to the form. So you won't be able to see the password I'm typing in. So you'll just have to believe me when I say this is not either secret or password. And of course, this is the most unsecure password field ever, but uh, the message is the same. You'd probably use this on a regular text field and not a password field, which would be pretty stupid. So uh, invalid value must be one of secret or password. So if I type in secret and hit login, then the form is successfully submitted because it's one of the two. And if I do the same for password, Hit enter, form successfully submitted. So of course there are other validators and you can create your own validators too. The docs here for WT forms are pretty good. So just check those out if you uh, need to know more about validators. I'll put a link to the validators part of the docs in the description below. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about uh, WT forms or validators in WT forms, just leave a message in the description below and I'll get to it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers so I can have a custom name in my YouTube URL. They don't let you do that until you have 100 subscribers. So please subscribe. And that's it for this video. I will talk to you in the next video. Thanks for watching.